So Game Maker Studio 2.3 has given us lightweight objects in the form of structs. You may have heard of them. It's, they've been a pretty big deal as part of the 2.3 update. I've made videos on them in the past. Other people have made videos on them in the past. You've probably heard of them at least a few times by now. And you can, uh, you can create one. Let me do that. And uh, let's, let's populate it with some variables. Let's give it a name. I guess in this example, it might as well represent a person or a person-like entity. For the purposes of this video, I would also like to have a member of the struct that is an array, so I suppose, I don't know, that is not an, not a square bracket. So this is a struct. It contains some data, some properties regarding Harry the Pot. And then obviously, if you come over to uh, the draw event, you could uh, you could access those properties. And you could, um, oops. That's what I called it, right? Yeah, it's highlighted in blue. The uh, the variable is, is blue in the syntax highlighting, and that should be a plus instead of a, a comma. Uh, you, could also, uh, you could also do something with the arrays. If you wanted to, you could index that array and, and access them, obviously. Uh, you all know how this is going to work. I'll get to the point quickly, I promise. Oh, illegal array use. We'll do it this way instead. There we go. Get the variables. Now, what if you wanted to do something like save the struct to a file? Or otherwise serialize the information so that you could send it over a network for a multiplayer game or something? Well, you could always, uh, you could always manually write the data into a file. You could write it into a JSON map. You could write the data yourself into a buffer. That's doable, you can do that. But it would be really nice if there was a way to automatically save and load a sprite the same hey. way that you would save and load a DS map or something like that uh, using the built-in GameMaker JSON functions. These two functions are for, uh, for DS maps. And they let you save a DS map to a string that's formatted as JSON and load the DS map back out of a, uh, a string that is formatted as JSON. And it would be really nice if there was a built-in way that GameMaker let you do that uh, unfortunately, there is not. Fortunately, uh, other people have. Never doubt the members of the Game Maker community to do things like this, particularly not if their names happen to be Juju Adams. So Juju Adams, I've talked about him before. He's made a, a text renderer that I find quite nice and some other things. Has made a, uh, a library for Game Maker Studio 2.3 called Snap. It stands for Struct and Array Parsing. I may or may not have been at least partially responsible for that name. And it does exactly what it says on the tin. You can look through the readme. It's got a, it's got functions for turning a struct into a JSON string, turning a JSON string into a struct, uh, turning a struct into a CSV string. That is a comma separated value string, sometimes used to store basic tables like spreadsheets. And it's got some other convenient functions. It can do XML too. Anyway, if you want to use it as usual, go over to the releases tab, uh, snap331, snap331, sorry, dot yymps, uh, download that, it will go somewhere on your computer. Once that's downloaded, you can either drag it into the GameMaker IDE, and it'll ask you if you want to import it, or you can go to tools, import local package, find it on your computer in my downloads folder somewhere, and you can import it that way. So if you open it up, you'll see some functions. There's the struct and array parser and all of the, of the functions it contains. Uh, you have add all to add them all. And you will see it has added some scripts to your, to your project. Uh, snap deep copy, snap from binary, snap from CSV, and so on and so forth. Again, it does exactly what it says on the tin. If you were to say if keyboard, let's just hit a key and you can turn You can turn the struct into a JSON string. Uh, again, it will also handle arrays appropriately and I believe other uh, special variables such as undefined. To start with, you can print that out in the console. 
or just in a message box because that's slightly faster. All right, that's great. Uh, we're gonna hit the spacebar, and you can see it has formatted it as a JSON string. So you use the snap to JSON function to turn a struct into a JSON string. Uh, as you can see, there are some other functions available, CSV, which is comma separated values, which is generally used to store tables of information, such as um, like basic, spread, basic spreadsheet information, XML, which is like JSON, but it looks more like HTML and it is much more verbose and I don't really like it as much. You can save it as a binary stream. I'm going to be going with JSON because that's um, probably the most common use case for this. Uh, you, can, uh, you can save that to a file, but I'm not about to make a video on how you save strings to files because I want this to be moderately quick. Uh, so instead I will show debug message JSON string, uh, run the game, and you will um, and you will see down in the console down here that it ha that it has turned that uh, that struct information to, into a JSON string. And the letter J looks really weird over here, as in Jane, because it looks kind of like a a closed square bracket. If you're not looking closely, I never thought about that before. Anyway, as you can surely see where this is going, you can also turn it back in to uh, you can turn the JSON string back into a struct. And um, and I will need to uh, I will need to escape some of these quotation, oops, some of these quotation marks with um, with backslashes, just so that they don't uh, they don't interfere with the string. Backslashes are wonderful. I am really glad they finally added escape sequences into uh, into Game Maker and Game Maker Studio too. Anyway, this is now a string. Uh, that final quotation mark does not need a backslash because that is the actual end of the string. And uh, if you want to turn that back into a struct, struct from JSON, it is snap from JSON, I'm sorry. And now you will see that uh, we get the information back out, which is very nice. All right, so the variables are being uh, are being read out. They they still exist. If I were to hit the spacebar or some other key again, you can see that it would be turned back into a struct. All the information is there, and that's pretty convenient. Uh, you can use structs for a lot of things. Obviously, you can use it to store player information. You can use it to store various game settings uh, that you might find in a settings menu or something. If you really want to, if you're me, you can use them to store pretty much anything else in the game. The one thing that this will not handle is uh, is methods slash functions. If I were to, let's see, comment this out. Um, if I were to give the original struct a, uh, a function, a method, which just says greetings, and then maybe when, all right, let's turn this from, uh, from any key to space, and let's turn it from check to check pressed. And uh, to demonstrate the method, let's use the shift key. And when you hit the shift key, we will invoke the greet method. So this, uh, this object now contains a method. That was, that was not the shift key, that was the space bar. And you can see it, uh, it popped up the little message box, the, um, the greet method ran. Uh, you can see out in the console, that it did actually print some information regarding the um, regarding the function, like the the uh, address of the function inside Game Maker, uh, but that will not be stored. That will not be uh, preserved when you load it back out. It will not be able to read the function back out. As you can see, it errors when you try to do that. Realistically, instead of causing an error, uh, the, the uh, snap to JSON function should probably just not attempt to write the uh, the function method information to the, the JSON to begin with. But before I go and post this video, I will ask Juju if he thinks this is a bug that should be fixed in favor of just not attempting to write the uh, the function information to the struct to begin with. I'll have his answer on the screen right now. Hey. Uh, regardless, as of the current version 3.3.1 of snap, it will not work for methods attached to structs. And that is really it. As I said at the beginning of this video, this uh, 
this extension is very much what it says on the tin. I'm just going to comment this out uh, with a note that says, uh, with a little warning. And I will re-comment this, uh, I will re-comment this little bit of JSON. Uh, one more thing to note, by the way, before I, uh, before I stop, is that this is specifically intended for structs and arrays. If you try to serialize a data structure, uh, for example, a DS map or a DS list, it'll, it won't work. It will just save the index of the data structure instead of the information that it contains. Uh, this is intended specifically for structs. And as you can see, you can have nested arrays, nested structs, and things like that. If you wanted to make an array out of a, a, a struct out of uh, the kids array, for example, If, for example, instead of the uh, the kids array containing a an array of names, if you wanted it to contain an array of structs instead, uh, you could do that. As you can see, I removed the greet function by the way, since that does not um does not exactly work when being serialized, and I don't want it getting in the way. So let's uh, let's hit the space bar and turn this into a into into the JSON string. Okay, that is uh, that is quite a string. It would probably be much easier to actually save this to a file at this point, but I don't want to muddle the video with saving and loading strings from files. Okay, let's run the game. Actually, let me actually uh, show what is inside that that array. Uh, by, for example, drawing the names. There you go. The, uh, the arrays are being read out. If I were to hit the spacebar again, you can see that once again, it is serialized correctly um, as it was originally loaded from the file. Okay. I think that's all I could possibly say about this without like going over every single function in this library. At the current moment in time, these are the, um, these are the serialization formats available. Uh, full reach is just a helper function. Snap deep copy is if you want to make an actual clone of a, uh, of a struct instead of just copying a reference to one. A string from file is for loading a string out of a file, as the name implies. Again, it's all very much what it says on the tin. If you want to, uh, if you want to see where you can find this uh, this library for yourself, there will be a link to the repository in the video description, or you can just go to Juju's GitHub account and look for a Snap. It's uh, it's quite easy to find on there. If you didn't know about this before, I hope it saves you a little bit of time. If you did know about this already, I hope it's already saved you a little bit of time. Um, if you want the code for this little demo, I will have uh, this project itself on, on GitHub and a link to that in the video description. If you like these videos and want to contribute towards them being made, I have a Patreon and there will be links to that as well. Speaking of which, this video is totally going to get demonetized, isn't it? All right, whatever. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I try to post a couple game dev videos a week. Oftentimes there will be videos about the more arcane parts of game dev. Sometimes they'll just be fun th stuff like this. I hope you found that useful and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Edward Holt, Indie Punch, Posha Dev, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and to force me to say them out loud at the end, head over to the Patreon page in the video description and join the fun.